was looking back and, and reading about this. And what I found is that it really wasn't the same. It wasn't being promoted in the same way that the, by the government that AI is being promoted today. And, and crucially, if you go back and read, the, the, there's these key speeches by you know then President Clinton later um, or, or, and before that even H.W. Bush a little bit about the internet. And it was really promoted by the government as a tool for economic equality and for information symmetry. And, and all the stuff was about how the internet would be a great educational tool. It wasn't really promoted even as an economic driver for American, the American economy at the time. Um, everything was about like the E-Rate initiative, which was about connecting schools and libraries, right? Whereas if you look at how, and if you, if you look at how the U.S. government and, and other global governments are promoting AI, it's, it's, it's done so much more with geopolitical and national security language. And I think there is a view that like whichever nation gets to artificial general intelligence or some kind of AI super intelligence or computer could be the global power for decades to come, right? It's seen as very existential from a geopolitical standpoint and the spending backs that up. So like if you if you compare like the the even if we include E-rate, which is this actual giant two, almost two and a half billion dollar program from the 90s to connect all those schools and libraries, it wasn't funded by government. It was funded by fees that the telecom industry funded by private industry. You know, that even if we include that which wasn't part of the federal budget, the, the investment would still have equaled about 0.1 to 0.2% of annual federal spending or only 0.003 of GDP. And 